If you have health insurance and it comes with a prescription drug plan, chances are it's managed by something called a pharmacy benefit manager. Most people aren't aware of how these pharmaceutical middlemen play a huge role in what prescription drugs you take and the price you pay for them. As the nation grapples with soaring health care costs, the role pharmacy benefit managers play is attracting more scrutiny. News Hour Weekend's Megan Thompson reports. A few years ago, Mark Felkowitz of Philadelphia volunteered to manage the affairs of his 91-year-old aunt. She had dementia and had moved into long-term care. So Felkowitz helps with things like paying for her prescription drugs. And the bill comes to me and I paid out of her, her checking account. Last year, while picking up a prescription at a major drug chain, Felkowitz happened to be complaining about high drug prices when the pharmacist gave him a tip. Pharmacist sort of came around the counter and took me off to the side and says, you might find the cheaper somewhere else. What? What? What, what do you mean, you know? So Falkowitz did some research online. His aunt was taking eight generic drugs for things like dementia and high blood pressure. She was paying close to $103 in insurance co-pays for those drugs every month. Felkowitz found he could get those exact same drugs for $65 if he paid out of pocket at an independent pharmacy, not using his aunt's insurance plan at all. That's nearly 40 percent less. Felkowitz manages a medical practice and deals with insurance plans all the time. He says it was a total surprise. I, I just couldn't understand it. it. This is a foreign concept. Never, never did it dawn on me. If you pay cash, do not submit to insurance, you save money. It's just, I pay all this money for insurance, what's it for? So why was Felkowitz paying nearly $103 for $65 worth of drugs? Where was that extra $38 going? One possibility is that the money went to what's known as a pharmacy benefit manager, or PBM. PBMs are designed to help health plans and insurers manage prescription drugs. Rutgers Law and School so professor Michael Carrier is an expert on the pharmaceutical industry. He explains idea. that PBMs act as middlemen between the insurance plans, drug makers, and pharmacies. He says most consumers have no idea there's a PBM, not an insurance company, managing their prescription drug plans. There are three main PBMs that take up 85% of the market. So you have Express Scripts, you have CVS, Caremark, and you have OptumRx. The three big PBMs brought in more than $300 billion in revenue last year. But Carrier says they began with a modest role in the industry. So in the late 60s, early 70s, PBMs started in giving plastic drug cards to consumers so they could go to the pharmacy. They didn't have a trail of paper. It made it easier to get prescription drugs. Through the years, though, they have gotten more and more power. If a patient has insurance, it's going through the PBMs. Howard Jacobson has been a pharmacist in Long Island, New York for 40 years. He says the PBM dictates the amount of the copay he collects and how much he's reimbursed. And he says a few years ago he started noticing something strange on transactions every now and then. It's called a clawback. So here's another claim. It's an inexpensive drug. You see the actual cost of the medicine is only $1.61. Jacobson showed us a recent transaction for the diabetes drug metformin. It cost him $1.61 to acquire the patient's dose. He says if the patient paid out of pocket, he would have sold it to them for $4. His profit would have been $2.39. But the patient used an insurance plan, and there was a middleman, the PBM. It told Jacobson to charge a $10.84 copay. It let him keep $1.93 and it took $8.91 for itself. You could have sold it to them for $4. Instead, right. they paid a $10.84 copay. Right. But until recently, Jacobson couldn't bring this up unless the customer asked. He says that's because many of his contracts with the PBMs contain provisions that prohibited him from pointing out that they could get their prescription cheaper if they didn't go through their insurance plan. Pharmacists call them gag clauses. It was difficult, actually. We're dealing with patients every day. We know them personally. Why should anyone have to pay more money than is necessary? Jacobson says he's never really sure how much money he'll be reimbursed by the PBM, an amount that's been steadily decreasing over the years. He says sometimes he actually loses money on a sale. I'm ultimately getting paid $9.06. Now, this particular drug, 
actually cost me $60 and change. I lost $50 on that prescription. Jacobson says so far he makes enough profit on other transactions to keep the pharmacy afloat. He feels he can't object to the system because the big PBMs, which control a majority of the market, will just tell him too bad. If you want our patients in this particular network to be able to come to your pharmacy, these are the terms. Take them or leave them. Pharmacists like Howard Jacobson aren't the only ones who are critical of PBMs. We're very much eliminating the middlemen. The middlemen became very, very rich. In right? May, President Trump announced his plan to lower prescription drug prices. He put many players in the crosshairs, drug makers, Burn, wholesalers, insurance companies, director. and PBMs. And he criticized a practice Our called rebates. Our plan will end the dishonest double dealing that allows the middleman to pocket rebates and discounts that should be passed on to consumers and patients. So how do so-called rebates work? In addition to managing business involving consumers, pharmacies, and insurance plans, PBMs also broker deals between drug makers and insurance plans. For instance, they help decide which drugs will be covered by the plan. The list of covered drugs is called a formulary. In a bid to get a drug on a plan's formulary, Drug companies sometimes pay PBMs. These payments are known in the business as rebates, and they can total millions of dollars. PBMs say they pass most of this money on to insurers, who say they use the money to lower copays and premiums for patients. Another issue that we've been hearing a lot about, that the president has even been talking about, is something called rebates. That sounds like a good thing. So it certainly does sound like a good thing. Rebate is money back. It could lower price for the consumers. The problem is that in this opaque world, where we have no idea what these contracts say, rebates actually can increase price. Michael Carrier says because these business deals are secret, it's not clear how much of the payment is being used to reduce patients' costs and how much is being pocketed by the PBMs and insurers themselves. Carrier also says this system could be inflating drug prices because drug makers have the incentive to increase the price of the drug in order to afford the payment to the PBM. By increasing the price of the drug, the manufacturer has more leeway to give a big rebate to the PBM. The PBM is happy, the drug is covered on the formulary. Unfortunately for all of us, drug prices go up. It's, it's, it's rather a, a startling and perverse system that has, a, that has evolved over time. Secretary of Health and Human Services Alex Azar testified in June before the Senate Health Committee about the president's drug, drug pricing sort of plan. Azar said the administration is considering regulatory changes that would allow rebates to be scrutinized under federal anti-kickback laws. We may need to move toward a system without rebates, where PBMs receive no compensation from the very pharma companies that they're supposed to be negotiating against. Azar, a former pharmaceutical executive, also said he's heard reports of PBMs threatening drug makers. We've had several drug companies come in who are, want to execute substantial material reductions in their drug prices. They're finding hurdles from pharmacy benefit managers and distributors where they might say, well, if you decrease your list price, I will take you off formulary compared to your competitor who will have a higher list price where I will make more money. I find that unconscionable. So what do the pharmacy benefit managers have to say about all this? Well, if we didn't save money, nobody would hire us. Mark Merritt is the president of the Pharmaceutical Care Management Association, an industry trade group that represents the nation's largest PBMs. He says, according to their research, PBMs can decrease drug benefit costs for patients by 30 percent. Our clients bring PBMs in because they want to make sure that benefits are good and that people have access to the drugs that they need. He objects to the accusations by Secretary Azar that PBMs have anything to do with keeping drug prices high. Yeah, that's inaccurate. And plus, uh, to the Secretary's credit, he criticized everybody in healthcare, most of all the drug companies for their high prices. And you have to start with that. Drug companies set the prices. Nobody else has anything to do with it. Merritt also defends the system of rebates. So the rebates go to the PBM, but how do we know that those rebates are then passed on to the consumer? What we do is we send the rebate dollars up to the insurer, uh, and they determine what they do with them. But that is really up to the health insurance plan, it's not the PBM. We have said repeatedly as an industry, we'd be happy to look at other models besides rebates. All we want to do is get to the lowest net cost for our customers. If there's a better way to do it, a better way to get savings, we'd be open to it. 
As for the complaints from pharmacists, Merritt says he thinks PBM reimbursements are fair. And when it comes to clawbacks, lawsuits have been filed against OptumRx and the insurers it works with, accusing them of profiting from excessive copays. Merritt says the practice is not something his PBM trade organization condones. If it is happening, it should stop. And that's our position as an industry. We don't support it uh, in any way. In a statement to NewsHour Weekend, OptumRx said we believe these lawsuits are without merit and denied using clawbacks at all. The two other big PBMs, CVS Caremark and Express Scripts, also said they do not engage in clawbacks. Legislators in 28 states have banned clawbacks or gag clauses. Members of Congress are looking to do the same. A bill is currently pending in Pennsylvania where Mark Felkowitz lives. He hasn't used his aunt's health insurance to buy her medications in a year and says he now shops around for his entire family's prescriptions, although he finds it ridiculous that he even has to in the first place. I just think there's something so terribly wrong with the system. Uh, it just defies rational sense.